Hello students, in this video we are going to be talking about cell membrane, membranes. Uh, so you're already somewhat familiar with cell membranes in that they are made up of phospholipids. So phospholipid, remember, is a structure that contains two nonpolar tails. Um, these nonpolar tails are essentially a fatty acid molecule that's been attached to a glycerol molecule. Um, so this glycerol molecule is here in the center. Um, you have three hydroxyl groups coming off from a uh, glycerol molecule. Um, two of these hydroxyl groups are actually uh, covalently linked to the, um, the fatty acid tails through a dehydration synthesis reaction. Uh, so you have the two tails that are attached and then you have the third hydroxyl group in glycerol attached to a phosphate group which may have other things attached to it as well. Uh, but this phosphate group gives this molecule a charge uh, which makes it a polar molecule, meaning part of it um, has this charge on it while the rest of it um, is nonpolar. And so you end up um, with this sheet of molecules um, that are essentially nonpolar tails uh, facing inward with the uh, the polar heads facing either the extracellular space or the lumen of the cell, the interior of the cell. Uh, so recall that this formation of structures, if you just put phospholipids into a solution, um, they're going to spontaneously form these structures. Um, they do this because water likes to form uh, polar molecules. Um, it's energetically favorable is a better way of saying it. Um, to have as many uh, of these, um, as many hydrogen bonds as possible. So you can see in this picture here, everything's just mixed together. Um, this leads to non-optimal uh, hydrogen bonding, which is not energetically favor favorable. So when you rearrange things so that they're in this formation, you optimize the number of hydrogen bonds you can form. And so these tails here get um, excluded. So it's really a hydrophobic um, exclusion that is leading these um, to face inward um, into the cell uh, membrane. And so you have this on the outside of the cell uh, interacting with the water molecules. You'd have also have this on the inside of the cell interacting with the uh, water molecules. Um, and ultimately uh, what you're going to have then are structures that um, have the nonpolar regions grouped together uh, being formed. Uh, here we have a liposome which is very much like the cell membrane that you might think of with the polar heads on the inside and the outside of the structure and all the nonpolar tails facing inward uh, from the polar heads. A mesel form can also form. Um, this typically happens if you only have one fatty acid instead of having uh, the two fatty acids in there. Um, so this doesn't leave any room on the interior for uh, the polar heads and you just have a single um, structure like this being formed. And then of course a bilayer sheet, if you have enough of it, it just would appear as just a single sheet. Um, of course we're looking to look at this as part of the cell membrane. Now phospholipids aren't the only components of cellular membranes. Uh, cellular membranes also consist of uh, cholesterol molecules, that's what these things here in the little. So these cholesterol molecules can kind of fit into some of the spaces that are um, present here, uh, which will um, alter the fluidity and, uh, and permeability of the cell membrane. Um, you can also have different protein structures, so we can, we can see that you can have integral proteins. Um, some of these proteins connect to uh, the, cy the cytoskeleton within the cell, and so you have these connections. Um, you can have transmembrane proteins, um, which can act either as a signaling molecule, um, so this could act be acting as a receptor, or it could be acting as something that could actually um, transport things through the cell, um, as well as have other uh, functions as possible. Um, you can also have components that uh, act as cell markers so that you can identify the cell. Um, so glycoproteins, these uh, mean that you're having a sugar connected to one of these integral um, membrane components and sticking out towards the cell. Um, you can also have glycolipids where you actually have um, lipid molecules, um, that's what these bright green things are, um, 
uh, you can have carbohydrate attached to those and so this acts as a cell marker so the cell um, has some way of identifying itself to um, other cells. Uh, a word on membrane fluidity. So there are a number of different component, <coughs> different things that can uh, alter membrane fluidity. One is the degree of saturation of the uh, lipids. So if you have a uh, membrane that's comprised only of saturated uh, lipids, these are going to be able to pack very close together and is actually going to decrease membrane fluidity. Um, but this, in contrast, will um, decrease uh, the permeability of the cell, so it will make it more of a, a barrier. Um, adding unsaturated double bonds to it can add kinks to these molecules, which can provide separation within it. This decreases membrane, um, uh, or it increases membrane fluidity, so it makes it so that the membrane's more uh, like a fluid, uh, and it also um, will increase membrane permeability, meaning that there's more things that can fit in between here. Uh, cholesterol is another thing that can alter membrane fluidity. Um, so cholesterol can pack into some of these gaps here, uh, which will um, prevent the membrane from being as fluid or as permeable as it was before. All right, I hope that was helpful. Um, I'll see you guys in class.